Lady from 18. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I rise in, in, to debate in the opposition of this bill. I want to talk to you about the cost of nullification. First, though, let me talk about the Affordable Health Care Act. There is so much misinformation out there about the Affordable Health Care Act. At the Associated Taxpayers of Idaho conference last fall, Joy Wilson, the Senior Federal Affairs Council and Health Policy Director, said that if it, someone tells you how much the Affordable Health Care will cost, they're wrong because the rules have not been written. We in this body know all about rules and how they will direct how a law is implemented and how it will cost. In the meantime, we will benefit from this health care legislation that Congress has passed. Let's look more specifically to the cost of nullification. The Attorney General has said that we are going to lose over a billion dollars in Medicaid funding. So, I've gotten out of order here, I'm sorry. Um, how, how many jobs in Idaho and how many citizens rely on these funds? Another cost is that we will get $2, billion, $2 million to implement the Affordable Health Care Act. About a million dollars is for the IT and about another million for, uh, to implement the exchanges. How many jobs would $2 million bring to Idaho? The sponsor of HB 117 tells me that we don't ex actually re receive the $2 million. We, in fact, get a reimbursement. And so far, we spend about $75,000. So if this bill passes, do we return the $75,000? Next, starting this last fall, some citizens started receiving some, of the, some relief of the cost of health care. My walking partner, whose husband takes many prescription drugs, asked me if House Bill 117 passes, will the cost of prescription drugs go back up for her husband? Part of, part of the health, Affordable Health Care Act is to fill the donut hole in the Prescription Drug Act that was passed by, by the previous administration and was not paid for. And how about the child who is newly covered by the act, but if nullification passes, will not receive health care because of a pre-existing condition. We say to the child, I know you, you got some treatment last fall, but we'll not be able to afford it now unless mommy and daddy comes up with $100,000 to pay for the treatment. Too bad, kid. If you lived in Oregon, you'd be okay, but not in Idaho, because we passed this law that denies your care. So will the, those citizens getting relief now have to pay back the federal government? for what they have received so far, or will they just not get those benefits? We don't know that. Next, the cost to the uninsured in Idaho. We have about 250,000 uninsured in Idaho, and about the same number that are what I call underinsured, people who have high deductible and high premium health insurance costs. That's about 500,000 citizens of Idaho. A third of our population is either underinsured or uninsured. Many of these citizens go to the emergency room for the health care, the most expensive form of health care. What does that cost? St. Al's, who used to be my employer, writes off about $40 million a year. How much do the other hospitals write off for uninsured? County indigent and the catastrophic fund equals about $50 million a year. What will happen with those? There are about 8,432 8, bankruptcies every year in Idaho, and we know that about half of them are because of Idaho families' inability to pay their medical bills. And for those of us with health insurance, we pay 30, 40 percent more for our treatment to offset the unpaid bills for the uninsured. I believe that caring for the, those unable to pay is a matter of civic duty. So I support the Health Care Act. Next. We don't have, how about the, litig the cost of litigation? The sponsor says that, our, that there are attorneys who will fight this pro bono, but be sure that the attorney general will be involved and so will others. So there could be more costs. Lastly, there are two decisions that say that the Affordable Health Care Act is unconstitutional. Well, no, there are two decisions that say that it's constitutional and two that say that it is not constitutional. So it's a 50-50 chance that maybe we are right or wrong. Uh, we can't implement the Affordable Health Care Act in a day. If we wait for the Supreme Court to rule in a year or two, and they decide that the Affordable Health Care Act is constitutional, then what will it cost for us to implement this act in that shortened time? We will need to hire people. They might have to work overtime. 
to get things enacted? Will there be fines or fees that we will have to pay because we are late? Can we afford to, to fall behind on implementing the Affordable Health Care Act? Can we risk the health care of 500,000 people? It's one thing to campaign on misinformation and ideologies, but it's another thing to govern. We must now govern. Can we take the risk to a third of our citizens? Can we take that risk? I urge your red light.